Hello, my name is Ashton, and today we're checking out this 25 horse Russell steam engine. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to Farm Alarm. My name is Tracy. This is my little cousin Ashton, and uh, he is everything steam engine. He knows all about steamers, and uh, today he's going to show us about this 25 horsepower Russell. Now, you were saying 25 horsepower, I also noticed that it is also 75 horsepower. So, tell me the difference. Why is there two different horsepower ratings on a steam engine? Okay, well, the 25 horse stands for pulling power. So, if you're pulling a plow or just anything that you would pull in a field, that's how much power. So that's also known as draw bar, draw bar horse, right? right? So how much horsepower. So essentially um, 25 horses compared to this one tractor can do the same work. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So tell me about the 75 horse. Where does that number come from? Okay. So if you look on the other side, there is a flywheel. And if you belt it up to a thrashing machine or a sawmill or a baker fan, this is where you would belt up to your implements and stuff and this actually has 75 horsepower off of the big flywheel okay and so i'm gonna i'm gonna assume the reason why there's more horsepower at the flywheel is because you're losing a lot of horsepower going through the whole drivetrain by right. the time it it's gets to the drop through right if, yeah. that makes sense how old is this tell me a little bit of history that you were telling me earlier all right well this engine was actually made in 1920 but nobody bought it until 1928. Well, you were saying something about World War II. Um, you know, I know that a lot of steamers were kind of maybe hidden um, because they didn't want to scrap them. A lot of people, you know, that they, the military or the government wanted to, wanted wanted all that iron so they can, you know, scrap it for tanks and, and bombs and whatever else, right? Right. And so maybe is that, you think that's one reason why this thing um, wasn't sold or? Yeah, probably because they probably didn't want to have to yeah. And you said something about they give them their gas tractor? Yeah, because there wasn't much gas around and you could get wood and water easier than you could get gas or kerosene. A lot of the people you're saying give up their gassers, their gas tractors uh, to be scrapped and kept their old steamers. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I want you to show them a little bit about um, how this thing works. This is the throttle. If I pull it back, it opens a steam valve and lets the piston get steam which will turn it and then this is the forward and reverse so whichever way I pull it is if it'll go forward or backwards this is called rolling the engine over it's what you do if you're threshing or running a salt mill. I can make it go the other way. talking about the clutch. If you push it forward, it actually engages it to the flywheel, which throws the pull all the gears into another gear and it will back it up or go forward with your forward and reverse. But we can't really do that right now because we don't have much pressure and that's because I we're letting the fire die down for the night. We're at about 25 pounds. That's all it really takes to roll the engine over. But usually we run it up to about 100 and that's a good setting pressure. It actually pops off at 125. So the pop-off valve is if you get too much pressure, it'll blow steam out. It's got a spring in it, so that spring will hold 125 pounds of pressure. Once it gets to that, this will pop off and let too, all the steam out that it needs to. 
But if your pop-off valve doesn't work, then your engine could explode if it gets too much pressure. This is actually a two-man job because it takes a lot of work to get the wood and keep up pressure and watch your water level. This is a water glass. If that runs down, you need to inject some water with all of these. This just pulls it out of the tank where the steam will basically pull it into the boiler. So you always want to make sure you have water in this water glass. And then just running the engine and steering the engine because these don't have power steering so it takes a lot to move it. It's moved by a worm gear so it takes a lot. Originally whenever this engine was built it wouldn't have had this rubber cap tire around it. It would actually had metal uh, little pieces that would go in the ground but they just put this on here just so because they kept breaking off and this won't tear up as bad. Well Ashton, thanks buddy. Really appreciate you showing me this old Russell and uh, I know that you really love steam engines and as his dad had just said um, he looks forward to the steam engine show every year and when it's over he looks forward to the next one next year so anything you want to tell him? Hey guys thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video.